Привет, comrades, and welcome to the good ship Smirch Spionam. <laughs> we are the flagship submarine of not just the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union that exists exclusively in the heads of white American liberals. <laughs> <laughs> I am Captain Devon. I am directing the state-of-the-art submarine to the east coast of America, where we will use mind control powers to make them elect a fucking Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me is, uh, um... Comrade Ellis, Comrade uh, so I'm, try I'm, I'm trying to figure out what rank you are. Your uniform is frankly cons quite confusing <laughs> to me. <laughs> Ca Cap Captain Major Lieutenant Commander. Right. Right. Uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, also with me is Hype Lieutenant Abigail. She has the most important job on this vessel. She stands on the bridge and breathlessly says, they will give you the order of Lenin for this comrade whenever <laughs> any decision is made, no matter how minor. Привет, товарищи! Мы снова играем в шкам в снасным старым противником в NHS gender identity clinic. And uh, and finally, set at the radar desk masterfully isolating the sound of an enemy vessel from the background noise. It is me vacuuming, bumping the microphone, <laughs> refusing to turn the radio off. His comrade <laughs> producer, Nate Bethay. Yeah, hello. I was very confused when seeing Tim Curry's face in this film because I remember him wearing a dress in a Rocky Horror Picture Show and I got excited in a way I could not explain, but it made me very angry. <laughs> <laughs> you will receive the rosette of Kronstein for this, Captain. <laughs> Here you have defected to this glorious imaginary nation from Pig Dog America. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Привет, доброе утро, and welcome to a bonus episode of Kill James Bond. Well, as you may have guessed from our delightful cold open, we are watching. We are going back at 3.22 a.m. for more old Connery. In the form <laughs> of Hunt for Red October, a genuinely ah, good movie. So good. And also a genuinely good Game Boy game on the original yeah. black and white Game Boy, Ooh. which opened with a chip tune version of the USSR National Anthem. Holy now shit. Now there's your hauntology. So good. good. Yeah. Oh my God, we are going to get to the hauntology. Mm. Because it's my, it's my so contention, because this is based on a novel by Tom Clancy. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's my, it's right. my contention that Tom Clancy is the most important and least examined American cultural figure of his time. That sort of like end of Cold War, beginning of War on Terrorism thing. Uh, mm. I, I simply cannot stop thinking about the bit in one of the Tom Clancy novels where he puts a fucking American football in the hands of a dying terrorist. So he's like, this is a fucking pigskin, baby. Yes. You're not going to heaven. Yes. <laughs> it's incredible. T T Tom Clancy, perfect. who has wow. written about uh, the, the <laughs> real, K KGB agents trying to shoot the Pope, um, forming like private intelligence agencies with twins. The guy, uh, his recurring protagonist, Jack Ryan, who is in this, who starts in this in, as a CIA analyst and becomes president over the course of about 50 books. A Japanese guy does 9-11 to the Capitol. Tom Clancy books are wild. I, I was going to say, it's funny to me that, uh, that this, we were talking about this right after the 20th anniversary of 9-11 because I can recall the extent to which people in American news media, not just in popular culture, were sort of like, does Tom Clancy have some explanation? Like, not like he was responsible, but more like <laughs> they, were, they were really, really fixated on this idea that Tom Clancy must have known something important about like the workings of like the terrorist mind or whatever, oh, yeah. because, because Dead of Honor, his novel oh. about uh, the... Japanese guy kamikazeing the U.S. Capitol. Uh, people were like, "Well, 9/11 was kind of that, wasn't it?" Yeah, the guy, the guy accidentally <laughs> yeah, predicted 9/11, but for the wrong country. Um, but this was—I mean, so did the Super Mario Brothers movie. If you want to get Lord. into it, <laughs> Tom Clancy's Super Mario Brothers movie. No, but this was this oh, was no, Tom Clancy's good. first novel, *The Hunt for Red October*. Before this, he was just kind of like a a, a war nerd, something to which I can relate. Um, mm -hmm. he, he was a guy who had always wanted to be in the military and couldn't get in. Uh, bad eyesight, apparently. 
And so, lol. Yeah, and so he just kind of became he interested in what would now I guess be called like open source intelligence, but back then was called being a fucking nerd. Um, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a, a lot of shit uh, that came out of the military-industrial complex got just published openly and got disseminated. You could buy and read, like, proceedings of, you know, such and such a society or a journal or whatever, and it'd be in there in, like, full colour, but nobody really understood that. And so Tom Clancy, by reading this, developed this sort of reputation as, like, oh, he knows a lot of shit about this. It's just, like, um, it's the discussion Nate and I have had where every time you're like, well, how come you know this shit about the military? I'm like, well, autism is a developmental disorder. <laughs> primarily characterized. Have you considered writing a novel, Alice? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the gift that Tom Clancy has for highly sort of technical details. That's what distinguishes him. But he was incredibly popular. Like, Reagan read this book. Um, mm -hmm. He had a lot of readers in the CIA. Uh, and a lot of readers in the CIA who, again, just fully did not grasp how much of this stuff was in the public domain and were just like, how does he know this about us? <laughs> Basi ba exactly. Basically, uh, the secret to his success, literally the volume of Jane's that's yes. shown in the, in, in the establishing shot in Jack Ryan's London office or whatever, uh, that's it. Well, we publish this shit every year, but we didn't think anyone would actually be autistic enough to read it. <laughs> <laughs> And then yeah, I, 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 there are some along, details baby. in this before we start. There are some things, and I, I may pause as, as we're talking through certain things because there were some details for me as a uh, ground pounder who was supposed to do helicopter nerd shit periodically for my job. There are things in this that I was really impressed by the attention to detail that it made it into the movie. And I realized that the Navy was like, as I skimmed from Wikipedia, <laughs> the Navy thought this might be able to do for submarines what Top Gun did for uh, fighter pilots. Oh. Although I don't know if this film would really make me want to be on a submarine. Uh, and so, I think that there was obviously some technical assistance therein, but it's, it is very mm. interesting how much attention to detail there is in sort of like, even in kind of like prosaic ways, but like that would stop, you know, in a regular film would be like, oh, this magical thing we can do with magic. Mm. Whereas in real life, you kind of, you kind of in this film as like real life, you kind of encounter the technical limitations of a thing that can be done, but isn't necessarily easily doable mm -hmm. or even doable at all in outside of the best of circumstances. Or so crucially doable safely. As we see it, exactly, times. exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so true. so uh, I have so many good things to say about this film, and I'm excited to hear uh, our summary. Mm. Well, we start in the icy cold of glass of Russia, Holiani Inlet, <laughs> uh, where we see first shot of the movie, old Sean Connery. Uh, yeah, sorry, I think, frankly, we owe it to Sean Connery. To do one good old man Connery movie yeah, that isn't a yeah. Bond one. Yeah, it was between this and Indiana Jones, and this was more related to our whole mm -hmm. deal. Um, yeah, so Sean Connery is a uh, the commanding officer of a Soviet ballistic missile submarine, and uh, we see him talk to his his officers and like uh, his crew as they are leaving Russia, and the whole time. Uh, he and everyone else is speaking Russian. Now, you may remember oh, well. Sean Connery's Ohio Gajayamash, Oriental mm -hmm. Languages. Uh, That's right. His Russian, not better, I'll be honest. Yeah, it's about as good as the Russian that I spoke during the cold open, which is to say mainly gibberish. <laughs> uh, he, but hey, you know, he, uh, he tries. I mean, uh, Sam Neill, who is his executive officer, mm -hmm. his, his second in command, is his Russian is a lot better. And I'm always thrilled to see Sam Neill in any I, Me too. I love Sam Neill mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, so every time he was on screen, I was going, hell yeah, Sam Neill. And every time he wasn't on screen, I was going, where is Sam Neill? Mm -hmm. Show mm -hmm. me him. Show me the boy. <laughs> Hold it right there. This says you aren't a Patreon subscriber of Kill James Bond. I'm afraid I'm going to have to make the rest of this podcast off limits to you until you go to patreon.com slash killjamesbond and toss a few pennies at us to gain access to the rest of this episode. That's patreon.com slash killjamesbond. <laughs> 